Hello, everyone. Thank you for those who are watching the recording. We've just been having a good old chat here on the live show. Um, but what we're going to run through tonight is a little um, human design training. So for those who aren't up to speed um, tonight, what we're going to be doing is um, I'm going to be running through some very, very basic foundational um, um, elements of the human design chart because I've just taken a poll um, for those who are joining me live on where their human design knowledge is at. And I, I do this because I want you to understand that it doesn't matter if this is literally your first interaction with this modality or um, like we've got Gillian, Gillian in here who's a 7 out of 10, which is amazing, um, but lots of zeros and ones and twos and threes and fours and fives, right? So Basically, what we're doing is um, we're wanting to leave tonight with an understanding of when we're looking at our body graph, we know what it means. And this is by no means comprehensive. What, I, what my intention is behind this training tonight is, um, I guess, a foot in the door on I want to learn more or this resonates with me or I finally understand this now or I can see what you've been talking about, you know. It's really a discovery class um, and I can't teach you everything in the next, I mean, I don't even know how long this is going to go for. In all honesty, we could go for an hour. Um, in, I probably wanted, would love to keep it under an hour in all honesty. Um, and then maybe we can have some Q&A as we go. Um, the people who are joining me live, um, I've asked them to be interactive with me because what that's going to do for those who are playing along at home is I guess demonstrate what I'm talking about is accurate because at the end of the day we've, we've all got individual designs and we only know how to interact with life how we show up and so does anyone else on the call have charts in front of them of other people so their kids or um, yep, I've got some nodding hands. That's really great. And that's what I encourage also in my I am course, because everyone's different. And I'm talking through all the things. If you don't have it, someone else in your family may, right? And you know them so well, you can recognize it within them. And then that adds validity to that. And then it also adds integration into the concept of it because you may be completely opposite, which is pretty cool. And honestly, it's probably why I love teaching this the most because normally with human design is when you go out, you may either do, no one on here I think has exactly studied it. Jillian may have being a seven, um, but most people were like my journey into human design where I go out onto Instagram or I find all the free content, right? And it sounds really interesting, but it's very hard to piece all the gazillion pieces of pieces of the puzzle together, um, and let alone integrate it, let alone being able to use it in your everyday life. And that's the whole point of what I want you to do. This stuff is so practical when you understand the foundations that it's one, it's going to give you permission to actually be yourself and it's going to help you release a lot of the conditioning that maybe we've received from parenting or or teachers or anyone that's actually probably truly loved us only because they I guess interacted with the world differently to we have so even though what they were teaching was correct for them it may not have aligned for you and it's actually inhibited you with truly becoming yourself okay so I'm going to actually share my screen I've got a PowerPoint presentation which is going to be good what I would love for you to do while I do it is really utilize the chat option and I also want you to make sure that you, when I'm asking the questions you're interacting with me um, so I can make sure that you're on board. If I'm going too fast or if I'm going over your head, please just let me know because I'll definitely, um, I guess, explain myself differently. Haley, if we wish to have the official training, roughly how much would this take and how much would it cost? Absolutely, Kirsten. So um, normally my training is $297. Like that's the same price that I charge for a one hour consult. So if you want to get a report from me on your human design, that's how much it costs. So my I am course is um, way more extensive than that. It's a four-week course. Um, it's one masterclass a week for the four weeks. So that masterclass goes for 90 minutes plus a 30-minute Q&A. So it's two hours really ultimately once a week for four weeks. Um, what I do is the first one um, will be running through the chart in more obviously detail than what we're going through tonight. Um, so basically you, you learn about yourself. You learn what all the 
the parts of the chart are. So when you're looking at it, you know what you're looking at. The second one, the filter we put over is, is um, health because all the parts of the chart will actually integrate with your digestion or your adrenals or your emotions or your digestive system, your thyroid, your reproductive organs, right? So we actually start to integrate that into our health and our well-being. Then the third module, we put a filter over what you've just learned, um, again, into relationships, particularly parenting, how to understand children um, and their design and how to honour that within them. And also to support the inner child within us and how we've been parented too, which is probably the most powerful module. And then the final module is, again, that same filter, putting it over with business and purpose and, and what we're here to show up and do and what our strengths are and how to shine bright in our communities, in our families and in our workplace and in our business, if we have one. Um, and so I've actually got an exclusive offer, which I'm just going to do you now. Um, there's a $75 voucher off of that price. So it'll be 222 if you wanted to join that within the next 24 hours because I haven't even launched it yet for round three, which is only going to happen tomorrow. So um, that's how I run I Am. Um, actually, let's just start because I'm going to explain a little bit, more about, a bit more about my background. Um, so for those who don't know, can everyone see that? Yeah. That's just a big picture of my face. <laughs> Okay, so I am a health coach, um, but really ultimately I'm here to support women's minds, women's bodies and women's businesses. Um, and at the end of the day, I really feel like we deserve abundance in all areas of life, but that includes emotional emotional abundance, emotional health, physical health, financial health, social health and spiritual health. And if we don't have one of these and are not in alignment, then something's not quite right. Okay, so... Really what we're doing is I work with essential oils. I do cover essential oils, particularly in module two of I am with the health element. But this is um, another layer, another modality that I will also use in my life to understand who I am. Okay. And that's why I called the course I am. Um, and so we do cover things like um, emotional intelligence. We, we cover our physical aspects. Um, and then, of course, there is there is so many other elements to how we can show up in the world as ourself from a spiritual level or a social level as well. So when I first saw my human design, it was very overwhelming and it was very confusing, um, but I, I love to learn and I knew there was something to it. And so I didn't, it kept coming back to me and I thought, okay, I have to leave into this more, but it took me about 12 months from when I got first introduced to it to when I felt like I could actually start to bring all the pieces together and make sense of it to the point where I've actually studied human design now. And now I've, I go on and I teach that. Um, so what I've been able to do with human design is create some create a way of teaching it that I've never seen anyone teach before. And I still haven't seen anyone teach it the way that I teach it, because what I'm doing is I'm not just giving you the basics. I'm actually cherry picking, I guess, the real elements that everyday people can use in their life. If that Does that make sense? You know, if you're going to study it because you want to go help other people and teach them human design and that kind of stuff, or don't do your own reports, well, of course, you're going to have to know every single thing. But what I'm, what I teach is just the really awesome things that are probably going to make a difference in your life. And that might mean some cherry picking really advanced areas of human design, as well as all the foundational stuff and the really basic stuff, which is just critical to everyone. Right. So you can actually get a quite a broad scope. And so, you know, I am a generator. Um, we're going to run through what that actually even means. Um, actually in an, if you know what you are, like if do you know that you're a generator? Do you know your profile? Can you read what's written on your chart? Can you type that into the chat box? Um, that would be really fun. Okay, because everything I do is interactive because everyone learns differently. And so some people learn through visual, some people learn through audible, some people have to actually write and type as they learn as well to help integrate it, right? So we're going to incorporate all of those three modules or ways of learning in, in everything that I do. Um, I'm a sacral authority. Like, look, to be honest, so many people on here have no idea what I'm talking right now. The reason I'm telling you this is just I'm planting seeds. So when you hear it again, it's like, oh, that's right. I heard that. I heard that. That's why I'm telling you right now. So don't feel like everything's overwhelming. Just understand that this is just me introducing you to some new terminology. All right. 
I've got a split definition. Um, I've got a I've got an incarnation cross, which is called the right angle cross of Maya. I've got an external market environment. All of these fun things. I've got a taste cognition. You're like, what the hell is all this mean? I'm a specific manifester. Um, lots of fun things. All right. And honestly, I didn't even know what the red and the black meant when I first started. Like, what does that even mean? Okay, so if I've been able to come from what is, why is it red and why is it black to being able to teach you what I know, then um, you're in good hands because I know exactly how to take you through those steps. Okay, so tonight what we're going to cover is just what human design is, some basic chart anatomy, anatomy, um, what your type and authority is, because these are really the key areas of human design, um, what the centers are and what they mean, some really basics around that, and obviously how to learn more and some Q&A, okay? So human design um, is a newer modality that was introduced in 1987. So Ra Uruhu is a man who conceptualized human design and it has evolved over the last few decades. Um, and I really feel like in the last couple of years, there's been a big turning point in human design, which is why I've actually, I guess, embracing it in a slightly different way. Because when I was first learning about it, every like th there were old men talking about it on YouTube. And I'm like, what? It was like, you've got it or you don't. And it's this or it's that. And I'm like, that sounds a bit, uh, right? But when I when I found some different styles of teaching and some different styles of learning, how I express human design is what is the highest expression of this? There is nothing right or wrong in anyone's design. In fact, we have the whole chart. We have it all within us. It's just how we interact with that energy, right? And when we understand and can honor how we interact with the world, then we can trust ourselves more. And at the end of the day, all human design is, is teaching you is nothing that you don't already know about your about yourself. You already know everything that I'm going to share with you about yourself. I'm just honoring it within you rather than you second guessing it. Okay. So it's, a, it's got a number of historical components like astrology, Kinji, uh, Kinji's, <laughs> Gene Keys, um, Kabbalah Tree of Life, the chakras and I Chang. So these are elements from thousands and thousands of years of history in many different um, nationalities, like um, in the Chinese or the Indian, um, lots of different areas of the world. So the body graph is a representation. When I say body graph, it's that pretty picture with all the colors and lines on it. It's just a representation of where the stars, planets, and neutrinos were in two moments in time. So the black, uh, the red side is about three months before you were born, and the black side is when you actually took your first breath. And both of those overlap. And so I don't know if anyone here is big into astrology, but that's why you have two different sides. One is unconscious and one is conscious. The result is this is like a blueprint. And the great thing is I love about this because I could never really get my head around astrology because it, ke it keeps moving, <laughs> is that it stays the same. And so once you know it, you know it, right? And it's a bit of a blueprint or a permission slip for your natural tra traits, your expressions and how you experience the world around you. Okay, so if you have your, um, let me just grab the chat up so I can see that as I go. Hang on, where is it? Chat. Oh, we kind of see the chat. Can someone type something and then I can see it come up? No, it's not playing games. Okay, I'm going to have to come back and check it later. Um, does anyone not have um, their, does everyone have their chart? Can everyone see their information as in their type, their strategy. You don't have to be able to read the chart. It will physically tell you what it is. Okay. Does that make sense? It'll give you the information. I'm getting thumbs up. Awesome. Thank you so much. So you can see here, my type is generator. My strategy is to respond. My authority is sacral. My profile is a one, three. Yeah. All right. So some chart anatomy. So the red versus the black. Um, the red is on the left-hand side. This is unconscious. This is the energy in the chart, which is underlying in, in, your, in your body. You're not really going to change too much of this. It's more just an awareness. The black side is the conscious side. That's your mind. These are things that you have more control over, things that you can work with. Maybe they're the shadows or the strengths of your life. Um, 
Are you going to learn specifically all of these different types of energies? No, these are pretty advanced areas. I just want you to know, because everyone asks, why is that color that color? It's like, well, that's why. <laughs> and yes, sometimes you'll have both. Sometimes you have red and black on the same um, gate or channel. And that just means you have both, both conscious and unconscious energy in that channel or gate. And I'm going to explain what the channels are, what the gates are, all that kind of stuff. But just that's just what they mean. And as far as all the centers, why is that green? Why is that brown? Why is that yellow? It's just because it is. <laughs> it's just because it is. Okay, so this is the fun bit. And I'm going to get you interactive and you have to actually like start using your brain and start counting and stuff like that. So there's gates and there's channels. And this is just how the electricity or the energy flows through your body. Simple as that. So in the white areas of your chart, we absorb things. And in the colored areas of your chart, you send the, the energy out. Um, but what we want to know is how many gates do we have and how many channels do we have? So a gate is just a little line coming out from a center. Um, and how I want you to know how many do you have? How many gates do you have? So for instance, um, I have 61, 17, 62, 16, 8, 35, 8, 1, 7, 10. So I'm lit I'll count them all. Can you just drop that in the chat? How many you have? Type it in the chat so I can see that you're. Can you see? I've got a very squinched up face of Julia. <laughs> Are you under no, you don't know how to count? I can't, I'm going to stop my share. Oh, there we go. Okay, so 20, 18, 18, 20. Manifesting generated sacral authority. Look at you guys go. 6 2 profile. Awesome. Okay, so what they're doing is they're literally counting. So on, on that chart, so wherever there's a line coming out of one of the centers, that's a num that's a that's a gate. Okay. 17. Is anyone stuck? <laughs> Let me know if you're stuck. The only reason I'm asking you to count this is so I know that you're looking at parts of your chart. Does that make sense? Because otherwise it just gets confusing. So for instance, um, can I actually even draw on this? I don't know if I can. Um, do you know how sometimes you can draw on your screen? No, it's not letting me. So I've got six, this red line here, um, 17. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I have 18 gates. Julia, are you okay now? Can you see? We'll get there, darling. We'll get there. All right. So now we're going to channels. Channels are when one gate and another gate connect. All right. This is like electricity. This is like one power cord hitting another power cord. And what happens when you plug one power cord into another? What happens to a light switch? It turns on, right? It's like having a lamp and then actually plugging it into the power socket. That's what a channel creates. That's when, that's when energy centers turn on. So I have, and that's a full line, not just one. Like, so that's, I've got one channel here. I've got one channel here. I've got one here and one here. So I have four channels. Can a channel be one color? Yes, it can be one. It can be red. It can be black. It can be red and black. It can be red and black and red. You know, it can be whatever colors. It doesn't matter what colors it is. It's just that it connects with a solid section. Two channels for Kimberly, two for Melissa. And so you'll see that these channels are now connected to colored centers because it's literally allowing that, the energy in those centers to pass through into the other one. It's pretty cool. This is how energy flows around your body. Four, two, five, four channels. Awesome. Okay, you're seeing it. Anyone stuck? All right, let's keep going. 
Okay, so these are the centers that we have. There are nine centers. So these centers, um, this is kind of where the chakra system comes in. Um, there are lots of chakra points in the body, not just the six or seven that we traditionally know. And uh, the theory is that the chakra system has been around for a very, very, very long time. And we've developed from a seven or six or seven system to a nine chakra system. Okay, and so we have the head center, the Ajna center, the throat center, the G center, the will center, the solar plexus center, the sacral center, the spleen center, and the root center. And I'm going to explain what each of those mean now, and we're going to dive into them a lot more. But when I teach human design, what it really is, is actually learning these nine centers and what how you express these and this energy in the world. And then the different filters you can put over, like how these centers actually relate. So be it for your health, be it with your relationships, be it with um, purpose and business and opportunity. It's all the same nine centers. It's just different filters that we're putting over them. So they it builds on one another. Does that make sense? It's not learning something new. It's just learning new ways um, that it actually operates in the world. So the head center is at the top, all right? This is for ideas and questions. And if it's white, you still have ideas and questions. And if it's colored, you still have ideas and questions. It's not the fact that you've got it or you don't. It's just how you interact with the energy of ideas and questions, okay? The Ajna is for your knowing and your answers. The throat is for manifesting and for communication, right? But this is obviously also the thyroid, okay? So, you know, yes, the physical areas relate to um, the health of that center, um, but it also helps us understand things on how we communicate and how we express ourselves in the world. The G center is around identity and purpose, okay? Um, the will center is also known as the heart center or the ego, and the really cool thing about the will center is it's actually connected to the digestive system. So that's a big one we talk about because that's there's always heaps of stuff relating to there. Um, the solar plexus is another big one. It's all of our emotions. It's a really, really critical one. The sacral center is around energy and creation. Um, this is really, this is, this is the center that determines a lot of what your type is, how you show up in the world, where your energy comes from. Um, and tr when I get to it, there's so many aha moments as to like, oh, that's why, that's why. And that a lot of that comes from that sacral center. The spleen center or splenic center is probably one of my most favorites, believe it or not. Um, this is around fear and intuition. And I love this one because I get, I really get to like hone in on, on this with you guys when it's about self-belief and conquering fears and just getting out there and doing it or releasing stuff. It's so much gets caught up in the center. Um, so it's a really great one for discovery and self-awareness. And then the root center is about like pressure and timing, um, which can be really insightful particularly if people have suffered from adrenal fatigue say for instance right any questions on those centers because we're going to cover them again and I'm going to give you examples but that's just where they sit and that like we all have we have all of these centers right okay so this is this is the difference if it's colored or if it's white and this is probably um I guess the most critical because particularly when I talk about relationships um, module three we cover a lot of this because whenever someone comes to me with or whenever I'm working with someone um, or relationships so like mother child or husband wife I always look on where is someone white and where is someone colored right so if you're if you're center is colored in that and you're the person other person is white it's like this is where we have attraction, but we can also have triggering. Okay, so it's it's such an eye opener. It's so cool. Explains so much. So the colored centers is where we send energy out. All right, we're transmitters. Okay, you have a constant access to energy in these centers. 
um, and you're more resilient in these areas, but you're not resistant. Okay. So yeah, those colored centers can be very handy and there are strengths, but it doesn't mean that we're perfect in those centers at all. And in fact, there's a lot of shadow work, particularly in those defined centers. Where it's undefined or open, so white, that's where we receive energy. Okay, that's where we absorb other people's stuff. So guess what we get when we absorb other people's stuff? We get conditioning. We get, we get triggered. We get a not enoughness. <laughs> we get unknowingness. Because you have access to the energy in those centers. It's just inconsistent because it depends who's you, who you're around. Okay. And so you're sensitive in these areas. Okay. But, um, and there's also a lot of maybe sometimes unknowingness in those areas. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. So this is where we're going to get into types and, and in, my course, I run through each of these really, really individually because it's so important, but I'm, I'm not going to do that tonight because I just don't have the time. Um, but what I would love for you to understand is it, which one of these you are because, and I'm going to share a bit of a story about how they each work with one another because, because I want you to understand that we each have our own individual role in this world and we're not here to show up like other people, okay? And sometimes we can compare ourselves to other people and there's no need, okay? So I'm a generator, but there are, what is it, about 7% of the population are manifestors. 20% of the population, actually, no, 9% of the population are manifestors. 20% of the population are projectors. Um, 35% of the population are generators. The other 35% of the generation uh, population are manifesting generators and about 1% of the population are, are reflectors. Okay. So if we have, do we have any reflectors on the call? Cause if we do, we have a unicorn, <laughs> we call them a unicorn because they're like literally one in a hundred. Um, so can you use the type in the comments, what type you are? And if you don't know, please write, I don't know. Projector, manifesting generator, projector, manifesting generator, generator, many gen, many gen, MG. Generator, generator, many gen, don't know, don't know, many gen. So for Kelly and Jackie, um, if you do have your chart, it will tell you on that chart somewhere, there will be a, a, a statement that says type. Um, and then um, your human design. I don't have my chart yet. Okay, cool. Well, uh, oh, sorry, honey. Hopefully you can rewatch the replay and then and run through um, once you have your chart in front of you, which will be good. Okay, lots of money gens here. Love it. <laughs> I love it too. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you a story about each of these and, and just so you have an understanding of them. Um, but these are going to be definitely something that you want to learn about because this is just how we show up in the world. It's a bit like I'm an Aries, I'm a Capricorn, I'm a Pisces. It's like, yes, but it's, it's how we're here to design and work. So a manifester is, um, so think of, I don't know, anyone who's in doTERRA, I'm just going to give um, people that you might know as examples. So Vanessa Jean and Jesse Rymers are both manifestors. Okay. So these are people who, um, I'm going to give you a construction example. Really good analogy. Let's go to construction, okay? So manifestors, they are the visionaries. They go, there's a pot of land. We're going to build a city there. I see this vision. Let's go build a city. And everyone's like, that is a great idea. That's a manifestor's job. A manifestor is here to not, not to answer to anyone. They have to get their own ideas and start their own stuff. They light the match. They not, knock the first domino over. They are here to initiate things. That's their job, okay? Projectors. Pro I have two projectors in my house, my husband and my son, okay? And so I know projectors very, very well. Tara Bliss is also a projector. Okay, so projectors, they are the developers. They're the architects. So they go, that's a great idea. I love the idea. This is a beautiful spot for a city. Okay, what, what, what do we need? What's the vision that we have for the city for the next 20 years? They, they draw up the plans, they create the scope, and they guide the project. But they're not here to pick up the tools. 
And the reason why manifestors and projectors are not here to necessarily do the work and pick up the tools is because their energy is designed to for different things. Their energy is not designed to for more like the manual labor, heavy lifting stuff. They just get worn out. They literally get worn out. Um, so they they are here to guide the thing. Generators are here to build the thing. So the generators go. They respond to stuff and they, they, the, they see that there's jobs out there that need to get done or there's something that needs to get fit, created. And like, I can do that because we have the energy to do that. I'm a generator, okay? And manifesting generators are the same. We just build in different ways. So a straight generator is here for mastery. And so I am, um, I will build a row of six houses and I will build all the foundations first and get it perfect. And then I'll do all the frames and get it perfect. And then I'll do all the roofs and get it perfect. And I'll finish all the houses and I'm done. Okay. A manifesting generator, they get too bored. They want pace like the manifester, but then they've got the energy to actually, they, they, they're here to create. So they're going to do house one, slab, frame, roof, blue, done rest then the second house slab frame roof house done rest and they need to rest because they go fast they can actually miss a few steps and they can get frustrated so they actually have to go back and learn the lessons before they start again and manifesting generators can burn out because if they don't take that rest then you know they don't have the energy necessary when the burst of energy comes again i'm getting oh my gods (laughs) You get it, right? We finish the six houses at the exact same time. We just approach it in different ways, okay? But we are the life force on the earth. That's why 70% of the population are generators or manifesting generators. We are here to build the thing. We are here to do the thing. Um, And then there's reflectors that are here to regulate the whole stuff. If you know a reflector, they are literally the reflection of the health of the, of the community that they're in. So if a reflector isn't happy or healthy, their community isn't happy or healthy because a reflector, their body chart is all white. All of their centers are white, all right? They're literally like a, a sponge to everyone around them, okay? So for, for me in this construction example, they're the interior designers, They come into these beautiful finished houses and go, how does everyone want to feel in this space? How are we going to create it a home? And they reflect the environment back to the people that are actually going to live in that space, right? Do you know doTERRA reflectors? I would have to think about that. Um, I'm not going to say I do, but I would have to check because I don't want to say it in case it's wrong. Okay. Okay. Exploring the centers. So does everyone understand that there are different types? And we def- I definitely dive more into that in my course, but um, your type is unique to you. There's five different ones, um, but it just explains a little bit about how you're here to show up in the world. And the biggest, per- there's so much permission, particularly if you're a projector, who's a projector? There's, there's so much like, oh my God, I just never thought I belonged. <laughs> It's like, no, darling, you just never were understood. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, I'm going to go through each of the centers. And so what I want you to do is use those little um, voting icons, okay? And I want you to tell me only if you're colored in these centers. Okay, does that make sense? So with the head... I want you to now use your voting button if you're colored in these centers. And if you don't know how to vote, use the chat box. Okay, so this is a pressure, this is a pressure center. Maybe if you're white, you get lots of actually no, sorry, I'm gonna totally opposite this. I want you to vote if you're white, because really the white areas are the ones that we have to work on the most. Okay. So put a put a yeah, thank you. Put a thing up if you're white in these centers. Okay. So a lot of like you can get headaches, you can get lots of things, you can get a lot of pressure um, when it comes to all the all the things in the head. But this is where we have the stream of thoughts with all the questions in our like when we go to bed and we start thinking of all the stuff, it's because you have an open access to everyone else's questions. It's not your stuff. 
And so when I, in my course, I don't have time to teach you tonight, but um, in the past, I, um, I've taught people how to calm that, right? How to tame that and how to release the energy that you've absorbed in that center that isn't your stuff to release, that isn't your stuff to hold, okay? So um, 30% of the population is defined. So you are an inspirational force on the planet, babe. If you're defined in this center, we come to you for inspiration because you're sending that energy out to us, okay? And I say us because I'm white, <laughs> but you're colored. So you spread inspiration everywhere you go. So you really honor that, all right? If you're white in this center, um, then you're... You're open, you're undefined, your inspiration is always coming to you. So some people can get really caught up with, with ideas and inspiration and, and they think that this is going to be the last good idea that they ever get. It's like, no, babe, it's just going to keep coming. Um, and so you don't have to answer all the questions. You don't need to answer all the questions because it's going to keep coming. You just need to, to answer the questions that inspire you. That is it. That's your job. Okay. Okay. Hands down on that one. We're going into the Ajna next. Does that resonate for those people? Okay, so this is the Ajna. Um, this is the answers. It's a bit like, you know, on a fridge with all the magnets, with all the letter magnets, the head is like when all of the magnets are jumbled up, all the inspiration. And then when it comes down into the Ajna, that's when they actually make a word. You know how you can pick all the numbers and actually make a sentence? That's the difference with the fridge magnets, with these two centers. It's like all the stuff is there, but it doesn't make any sense. And then when it comes down into the ajna, you actually get an answer. It actually starts to take, it takes form. So put your hand up if you were defined, uh, you're white in the center. So you can see here that majority of the population is white, but it's closer to 50-50. Now I'm, I'm colored in the center. I'm defined in the center. Okay. So I have this unique capability of being certain. So people come to me for answers. And so if you are colored in the center, yeah, you're drawn to people who are defined in the center because they have the answers that you're looking for. Okay. There are many ways to think about information. So we can get a little bit stubborn in the, in the ways that we think about information because we're a bit set in that energy in that space. But the beautiful thing is if you're white in this space or undefined, then you are flexible in your way that you approach answers. You're more creative in the way that you, you approach your answers, okay? So there is always more to know. You're never going to know everything. And sometimes actually too much knowledge can be overwhelming for you, like too much learning can be overwhelming for you because that information and stuff can kind of come in and it doesn't really stay, and so some people will have grown up their whole life thinking that they're silly or that they're dumb. Um, and it's actually not the case. It's just you're, you're not designed to hold information in that way. Does that make sense? Um, so if you are white in that area, just always know that there's always going to be more to know and that you can write things down to remember them. <laughs> okay. Does the color matter? No, it's always going to be green if it's turned on. Um, it's either colored or it's not. <clears throat> Okay, the throat center. So all energy wants to express itself through the throat. And this is critical um, because that's the only way for energy to express itself. As in, if, if we're feeling something in our body, how else can it express itself in the world without, verbal, without being verbal? Really, it's the only thing that exits our body, if you think of it that way, um, outside of just physical energy. So if this is defined, huge part of the population is defined, okay? If you're white in the center, I want you to raise your hand. So I'm just going to talk to the people who are colored in the center first. So when you speak, you have great responsibility because those words land on people, okay? It means something for people. It means it can move people, but it can trigger people too. Um, I allow others to have a voice and use mine to invite others to speak. So my, both my children are white, throat centers. So I have to be really mindful um, that my husband and I uh, define throat centers. But if you're white, so I'm looking at, I can see Kate and Hallie and Brooke, if you've got your hand up that you're being white in this center. So was anyone a chatterbox as a kid or shushed a lot as a child? No? Or were you really quiet and shy? 
quiet and shy. And so this is this is the thing is that a lot of conditioning can happen in a in a throat because either you may have been really chatty at one or two or three and you learned that that was not okay, right? And so you hid or you didn't trust your voice because you have an inconsistent access to the way that you communicate. But I want to share a gift with you right now for those who have always questioned this um, is that you can meet people where they're at. You can talk to people down here if, you, if they need that quiet kind of connection. And then you can speak to people up here if they need that. Now, I was, I always thought that was quite an inconsistent way of being, being someone. So for instance, if, if I saw someone approach me and talk to me in a certain way, and then turn around and speak to someone completely different, I would think, why are they doing that? That like, that's complete, like, that just seems like they're not being authentic. But it's not, they're just meeting me where I'm at, and they have the ability to meet somewhere else where they're at, where I'm consistent in the way that I communicate with people. Does that make sense? Um, so if you're white, just like know that you're seen and valued, especially when you're silent. I think people, um, if they were a chatterbox, they were overcompensating because they felt like they were invisible if they weren't heard. Um, and that you'll always, your body will always know when to communicate. So trust that your voice will want to come out. Okay. The G center is um, it's a monopole. It's like a magnetic force in the body. It's for direction and love and purpose. So um, if it's defined, you, you have this pull in you knowing that you have a purpose here. It's, a, it's an internal pull for your internal purpose and that you, you confidently or can confidently express that. The thing with undefined people in this center is that your path is always evolving. And maybe um, we can see Kirsty, who's got a hand up on this one, being white, Pip has as well. I don't know whether you've always been wavering in your purpose or it's like, why does everyone else have to act together and I'm over here and then, you know, and then I feel like I've never got, you know, I'm always kind of questioning myself and my path is like, no, your path is always evolving. It's always going to be evolving because it depends who you're hanging around. Because you're reflecting what everyone else's purposes are around you. So if you're not happy, the good thing about you is that if you're not healthy or happy, you've just got to physically move. You've got to move around. You've got to move from the people that you're hanging around. We've got to physically move away from the energy of those people because they're the ones that are impacting you. Okay. Simple as that. However, when it comes to kids, it's really interesting because my son's white. He can get a bit misled in the classroom by other kids, right? Because he's interacting with their energy rather than his own. So when, um, when I am in the right place, the right opportunities come to me. So you'll just know when things are in alignment, when you're are in the right environment and things work for you. Now, this can also be around love too. We'll talk more about that in I Am, but lots of people who struggle to find relationships and stuff, it can be also in this, in this center too. Okay, so the will, the heart, the ego, it's got three names, sorry to confuse you. It's a motor center. It's about willpower. It's about self-esteem. It's about finishing things. It's about saying you're going to do something and actually doing it or not doing it. Um, it's about um, what drives us to add value to the world, to feel worthy. All of this is in this space. It's a really, really big center. You can see that that majority of people, huge proportion of people are undefined in this center, which is probably why a lot of self-confidence is low. Okay. If you are colored in this center, like my husband, um, you have a constant knowing within yourself that everything's fine. You don't understand why someone might say they're going to do something and don't follow through because it's just what you do. You don't understand that, that, that someone would second guess themselves because why would you do that? You can just like, it's because you have this constant access to self empowerment, self worth. It's just who you are. But when you're white in that center, like myself, we're always second guessing ourselves. 
we're always looking for those little pats on the head and we think that, well, if we win this, then we'll be worthy. Or if we help this person and we please this person, then we'll be worthy. Or if we're, if we're first in this, then we'll be worthy. If I reach this goal, well, then I'll be worthy. And we keep trying all of these things, yet we come up kind of feeling a bit meh, okay? And that's because all of these white centers in our body is what we're here to learn and experience. And we're here to determine that we're actually worthy simply because we exist. We're actually not here to prove anything, okay? And so we just have to be kinder to ourselves. Now, when we come down into the solar plexus, this is around the emotions. This is another big center. In fact, if you're defined in this center, it overrules all the other centers. Who here is colored in their solar plexus? Christine is, just use the chat because I can't see everyone's faces. All right. The reason I ask this is because you know how we talked about our types, projector, manifester, um, generator, you will have a word in front of that. You will be an emotional manifester, an emotional projector, an emotional manifesting generator, an emotional generator, okay? This is why. is because the solar plexus energy, if it's turned on, overrides all the other authorities. It's like, I'm the king authority here. Thank you very much. Okay. Both your kids are. So both my children are emotional authorities as well, where Ben and I, my husband and I are not. And that's a beautiful balance in our family. Okay. And you'll definitely have a balance within the people that you spend the most time with. And I'll, whenever I do family charts, you always see a balance with all of the centers. In all honesty, you'll always, it's just amazing how you all balance each other out. It's just beautiful. So when it's defined and colored, um, okay, Wendy, you're self-projected. Okay, so that's a whole other thing. And we don't cover that in this in tonight, but you definitely, I definitely cover that in I am. Um, Emotional intelligence is your superpower. So that if you're defined and colored in the center, you are emotionally intelligent, okay? You have this ability to understand emotions and understand people like no one else because emotionally defined people experience emotions on a daily, hourly basis. You have emotional waves, okay? And so you may associate with like thinking that there's like, why was I up here and now I'm down here? <laughs> like there, we I, I go through all the different emotional waves in my course, but just understand that they're slightly different depending on, on who you are. I explain all of that. But I guess the main thing to understand about having an emotional authority or a defined solar plexus is you can't make fast decisions. That's your biggest game changer. Do not let people force you into making a decision on the spot. Unless it's like, what do you want for lunch? That's okay. You're going to have to tell them. But if it's a bigger thing or if it's like, do you want to be involved in this or do you want to buy this house or do you want to invest this money? It's like, can I get back to you tomorrow? Or thank you so much for the opportunity. I'll let you know tomorrow. Like sleep on it or meditate on it. Because if you make a decision at this part of your emotional wave or this part of your emotional wave, you're going to wake up and go, <laughs> all right and so depending on christine's like yeah i get it right so depending on where you're at just um some kind of meditation will bring you back to that even keel sleep will bring you back to that even clear and clarity you just need time you just need time to be able to make a decision if you're undefined or open or white in this center you are an empath Okay, it's your superpower. You absorb other people's emotions and amplify them. However, there's lots, <laughs> there's, a, there's a beautiful gift in this and there's also a bit of a downside to this because one thing we tend to do is avoid difficult conversations because we're already preempting how someone's going to feel about it. We're feeling that emotion, amplifying it within ourselves, and completely avoiding it because we don't want to go there. Okay, so we can avoid conversations. We can also take on emotions that are not ours, right? So you need a lot of energetic protection oils. <laughs> really, really important. 
because you are constantly absorbing other people's emotions, amplifying them and thinking that they're your own and they're not. Okay. So the main thing here is to be clear because that is the kindest thing. So this is really connected to communication too. Um, I love essential oils when it comes to supporting the solar plexus because they're going to really help you determine what your emotions are and what they're not and how to work through them or how to release them. And it really helps the centers to stay healthy. Okay. Oh my God, that just happened to me tonight. <laughs> oh. Brooke, we're not going to go into all the oils, honey, but I'll just say all of them because every single oil has an emotional connection. And that's why I use... The Oracle of Essences, if you don't have every single oh, if you don't have every single oil, you can definitely use those to determine emotional connection to the oils. Um, and then there's the book, the Essential Emotions book. And I, you can use your oils intuitively that way. But that would be that would be my answer to all, all, all of them. <laughs> protection oils for protection, cleansing oils for cleansing, emotional supporting oils for the emotions that are coming up. So that kind of stuff too. Those cards are, it's called Oracle of Essences. Oh, I can't. It's a bit bright. So a beautiful woman in Adelaide called Monica actually channels these and creates these. They're absolutely magic. Oh, I love you, Katharina. Thank you. She's put a link in there. Let's keep going. Others run out of time. I do love to talk. Okay. So um, the sacral. This is the center that creates energy. It's the center of creation. <clears throat> we all have it. We just interact with that energy differently. If this is colored, guess what? You're a generator. That's what makes you a generator, either a generator or a manifesting generator. So 70% of the population have this colored. 30% of the population do not. Um, and so this is what I call the battery pack. This is the battery pack. For those who have it colored, you're the energizer bunny. You've always got access to that energy. Um, the thing is, is that we've been given this energy for the to be used on the right things. So if you're not using the energy, your energy on the right things, one, you're probably miserable. Two, you're probably not sleeping very well. And three, you probably beat yourself up because you didn't do the one thing that would actually be productive over just being busy. Okay, so this is a, there's a big difference between productive and busy for generators. You've got to use your energy to be productive on things that matter to you because generators get used, especially in the workforce. Because we have the energy, we say yes to stuff because we can. Doesn't mean we should, okay? We dive in a lot more into this, but just, just honor that. Um, and then if you're undefined or open or white in this center, um, hmm. resting is active for you. So my husband's a projector, so he's white in this center. If you're a manifester, you're white in this center. Um, I use like my husband, like when he actually isn't working or when he's resting, I'm like, oh, like it actually hurts me to see him not work. <laughs> like it's, it's, but it's, I honor that now in him. Like I used to, I used to resent him for that because it's like, well, why aren't you doing more? Well, now I honor that in him because I know that he's using his energy in different ways. Okay. So that you guys contribute into society in your own unique way. You absorb energy from everyone else. So you absolutely have energy to do stuff, but it's inconsistent. So depending on who you're around, you absorb it from them and then you have to let it deplete so you can have a good night rest. So sleep is a big one for you guys. You need a lot more sleep if you're undefined. You need wind down techniques. You need you need a routine before you go to bed and you need a lot longer to go to, to, to wind down and a lot more sleep. Really important for kids too. We talk about that a lot more later. Okay, so the spleen um, is, I said it's one of my most favorite centers. Um, this is the center for fears, intuition and timing. It is really, really fantastic. It's a very innate knowingness um, within our chart. Does anyone, is anyone a splenic projector or a splenic manifester here? Oh, Christine is. Awesome. Okay, so this is how you make decisions. So I'm a, a sacral decision maker. I use my gut instinct. You use your intuition, okay? It's a download. These are downloads that we get. 
It's like the deer in the forest that goes, something's wrong, I've got to go. And you don't know what it is, you've just got to trust it, okay? And so if you're coloured in this centre, like I am, I think personally I, I like that. I, I would struggle to, I feel for the people who are white in these centres and I'll explain why. There's a gift to it. I just think, I don't know, I just, I just, I just feel like it would be tough. Um, so when you're defined, you, you can, when fear comes to you, when you're experiencing fear, you know how to process it. Like it can kind of stump you, but you have the gumption to move through it. All right. You also get quite a lot of downloads and intuition. And, you, and when the fear comes with those downloads, you can move through it and take action. Right. You have this way of processing fears. Um, when you're open to this center, you can, you can have unrealistic expectations around fear. So literally jumping out of the plane might as well kill you. You just like, you will die. It's like, well, no, actually you don't die. You've got a parachute and it makes sense. And yes, it's scary, but we can go do it anyway. All right. It's around like, I see it a lot in helicopter parents. It's like, get down from there. Or, dip, dip, dip. It's because they're preempting all of the fear and they don't know how to rationalize it as quickly as someone who's defined would. They can also hang on to things for too long. Um, so there's a really big mantra around, can I let this go? Ha, huh. Kate's saying, I'm white, can confirm that it's tough. Yeah, yeah. Look, the, the gift with being white is that as maybe even a healer, um, this is connected to the immune system. One, your immune system may be more compromised because you're more susceptible to other people's energy in the center, but you can also feel other people's immune systems, their sicknesses. Like, like in the solar plexus, we can feel people's emotions. You can feel people's health. So if you're a healer, it's actually quite powerful. All right. However, means you got to do a lot of cleansing in that center. You've got to look after that center. You've got to look after that organ too. Um, but the main thing is, it's all around safety. Okay. It's, it's all around safety. And there's a lot of unpacking in the center when it comes to childhood, because if you're attracting or attached to bad relationships, narcissistic relationships, a lot of that has come through from um, our childhood and hanging on to things that have been unhealthy out of fear of what it means to not have that relationship in your life. Does that make sense? So a lot of releasing, a lot of letting go, um, but there's a lot of opportunity and that's actually what you've come in here to learn. So it's just a life lesson that will keep showing up for you until you kind of embrace it. And then the root, the root is around adrenaline and momentum. Um, most are defined in this center. Again, this is one I'm happy to be defined in because when I get put under pressure, I know how to modulate that pressure. And it means I don't get burnt out. Like I haven't really, like I get tired and run down, but I don't, I've never really ex experienced full burnout. Um, and I don't, I don't really know how someone could actually let themselves get to that point. But yet I know so many people who have experienced adrenal fatigue or burnout and it's a real thing, right? And chances are they would be probably white in this center. And the reason for that is if you are white in this center, you constantly are feeling like, like your, your cortisol is peaking because like I'm, I don't have enough time and I'm already late. It's like we've got, a, we've got half an hour before we have to go. No, 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 no. We have to do it a bit, a bit, a bit, right? Time is always on your side. Just, just it's okay. But if I'm working with someone, like I'm defined, I'm sending the energy out for pressure, right? Momentum, like let's go, let's go. But if I'm working with someone who's white in that center, I have to be mindful that they might not like that. That might not feel comfortable for them. And so I have to be different with those people and actually tone down that energy for them and approach them in a different way. My whole family is white in the center. So either are they always late for stuff or are they always on time because they're worried that they're going to be late for stuff? So, um, yeah, does that help you guys? So really ultimately... You know, you're not going to have all the answers tonight. Um, and when you're just beginning, right? Be kind to yourself. P 
people's design awakens to them as they go, as they integrate what they learn. So for me, it's, it's, it's a moving process. And that's why when I teach human design, it's not just about the content, it's about the integration. That's why I use so many analogies. That's why I ask you to have different charts in front of you. That's why I give you different filters for different centers when we when we learn it week each week, right? It's because one if some if it once a penny drops on something, you've got it. And then when you see it again, you can integrate it. And when you see it in someone else, you can honor it. Right. But it, and it just just trust yourself that this is a process and it's a journey and that it's just fun. Just play with it and experiment with it um, and enjoy it. I love the way that you explain it all. Wow. I've learned even more. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, Jillian. And you were a seven. You were a seven coming into human design. All right. And I hope that someone who is a zero is now like a two or a three or a one, you know, like they, they know something more than what they came in and they hopefully don't feel overwhelmed. Um, these are just bite-sized little elements. And I have actually included a lot in this free training, probably more than anyone would in a free training. But at the end of the day, I want you to have value from this because I want you to understand the value that exists in understanding who you are. And this is just another tool to help you do so, you know? So for those that were asking about the course, it starts on the 6th of July. And so it runs in the, on Tuesdays on those four weeks, okay, in that month. It's, I think I'm running it at 7, 7 or 7.30. I'm, I'm moving it forward a little bit earlier in the night um, because we have people in New Zealand, we have people in London, we have people all over the world joining us. Um, but there's also replay. So you have access to the content in I am forever. So all the recordings get put up, you get all the PDFs and the PowerPoints and all the kind of things. So people watch the, watch the recordings over and over and over again, because they learn something new when they go and re-listen to it. That's the whole point of it. The other thing that I offer with it is a, um, a Facebook pop-up Facebook group, because what happens is there's always continued questions after it and it's more than just a q a at the end no like the, the next morning you're going to wake up with a question or you're going to see something that happens and you're going to want need to know an answer right and so for the not only the month of the course but also the month following so for two months you actually have a container to go in and ask questions for me to add extra content for me to do all the things that actually are going to support you with what you want to learn right beyond the content that's just just, just given Thank you again, Haley. The more I hear from you, the more interested I am in learning more. I'm glad, Bernie. I'm so I'm so excited for you. And so this is just a breakdown. So the course, the classes run for 90 minutes and they fly. I mean, this has been 30, 60 minutes, right? Um, plus I offer 30 minutes at the end for all the Q&A that everyone could possibly want at that time. So week one is the human design introduction. So basically, what does human design say about me? It's a little bit like I covered today. I just cover more details around your type and authority and how to make decisions and that kind of thing. Week two is about integrating that human design into your health. So your mental health, your physical health and your spiritual health. Week three is about integrating that human design into your parenting. So not only of yourself, but also of others. It's for the relationships in your life. Week four is then about integrating that human design into business. So be that as an employee, a self-employed or an entrepreneur, it's how you show up. It's your relationships that you have in your life and it's, it's what you're here to do, okay? So we also have a bonus integration call in month two, which means week, a couple of weeks post-course, you've gone out, you're living your life. We, we do another one to tie it all up again. So that's basically like a, a open for all. And it's normally all around week three. So the last two modules I've done, the integration call has always been around week three and me reading parents and child charts. That's what everyone has wanted. And it's been like, the old, it's just been the best. I literally get charts up. I go, what's going on? And I give them mini readings in that integration call. You get lifetime access to the course. Um, the pop-up training and the course content as well. So, oh, there's lots. Look, if you go onto my sales page, um, which actually isn't being launched until tomorrow, there's lots of testimonies on there. Um, but honestly, I just want to, I just aim to please. <laughs> That's all I want to do for you guys. I just want to be there of service and help you learn this content in a simple, practical 
way. And so, as I said, the course is normally two ninety seven. Yes, there's going to be an early bird offer that's going to be launched when I launch it tomorrow. But this is a pre-launch because technically it's not launched yet. And this is something that's only been offered to my wait list, but I'll offer it to you guys as well. So it's never going to be cheaper than this. And it's only going to be offered for another 24 hours. So I do that because those emotional authorities, you need to sleep on it <laughs> unless you've already made up your decision. Um, but this will, this will expire at the end of tomorrow. So tomorrow night. And there is a bit.ly link. Um, so you need to type it in exactly. Actually, I can probably put it into here as well. HTTP. Uh, and it's case sensitive. So, and then, oh, hang on. Coupon. I am waitlist. Okay, so I've put the link into the chat for those who are joining me live. Um, actually, I can just stop because we're doing Q&A now. Um, and now I can see all your faces. So Haley, can we refer friends to the above? Yeah, sure. Go for it. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, and for the, if, if people miss the pre-sale this price it's still a $50 discount with the early bird so you're talking 25 bucks difference so I also have a payment plan there's also a payment plan so I think it's 55 a month for five months um so, so yeah I try and make it and if you need something different just contact me you know it's not about the money it's about making sure that it's accessible for people because at the end of the day whenever I see someone there's a coupon code for the Yes, it's the I am waitlist. Oh, you saw it there. Um, human design is really expensive. And, and I, I understand why. But I guess for me, my gift is that doTERRA supports me and my family financially. And I'm extremely grateful for that. And so what I want to do is I don't want to undermine this content. And I don't want you to think that, well, that course is $600 or that course is $2,000 or that course is $7,000. It's like, I'm not going to get much out of this. It's like, I call, I, I say bullshit. You're going to get a lot out of this course. I just want to make it accessible for people. Right. Um, and so that's why I've priced it like I've priced it, it because at the end of the day, it is a group training. And um, I want it, I want you to be able to get the most out of, out of that more so than, hey, here's a report. This is all you need to know. You know, like I want you to be, because then when, when people get that, they go like, but what about this? And what about that? And what about that? And there's no way to actually find that information out, right? So the beautiful thing is you can, you can have five charts in front of you when you're doing I am, and you can look it all up and you can write all your notes and you can learn and you can talk to your spouse about it and you can talk to your kids about it and you can actually start to honour the relationships in your life and show up how you know you're capable of showing up and release the things that you've been hang up on because it's not who you are right and actually start to own own some things that you're really really powerful within you okay so I'm going to stop talking I'm going to take a drink and you're going to ask me some questions come on feel free to unmute or type And it can be personal. It can be, I've got this, or what does this mean? Or what is this in your chart? Like if you've looked at something on your chart and you don't know what it is. Um, do these charts change with age or are they the same? Okay, that's a really great question. They stay the same. However, um, we cover profiles in my course, the, the numbers, the two numbers, one, three, two, four, you know, three, six. Okay. Those, they don't change, but does anyone have a six in their profile? A six. So there should be two numbers. And does anyone have a six? Or hands up or something. Okay, we've got some few sixes. Yep, so Melissa's a four six. Okay, so sixes for the first 30 years of their life, which is up to their Saturn return, their first Saturn return, 
act as a three. So a six is, is, has the energy of a three. This makes no sense to people, but you asked if something changes. Technically, it doesn't change just how the energy shows up. So people with six in their profile normally have a really turbulent or interesting first 30 years of their life. And the re- I'm getting a smile from Melissa because she gets it, right? Um, it, the reason for that is, is because you are there to learn lessons, to experiment, to fail. And then the following 30 years, so the next element is when you actually teach on those because a six energy is the energy of an influencer, Okay, it's of a mentor, like, oh, no, I'd say more of like an influencer. What you learn in those first 30 years is what you're here to then go and show, share with the world. So it's a really big one. Do you mean six colored areas? No, darling, it's a profile number. We didn't cover it tonight, so I don't expect you to understand, okay? So um, um, there's, to, no, am I really going to go into it? Um, <laughs> all right, if you have your chart, if you have your chart, these top two squares, all right? This is where your profile comes from, these two, these top two squares. And you will have a number, something, something, dot something, and something, something, dot something. So for this person, is a 27.3 and a 45.5. So you want the dot number and the dot number. So you want to go the black dot number is the first number of your profile. And the dot number on the red is the second number of your profile. So this lady is a three, five. So the black, that's where the three is. And this is the where the dot five is. So that's where your profile comes from. <laughs> so everyone should be able to see that. Um, if that isn't spot on, I don't know what is Amy's saying. And, and I mean, honestly, this still blows my mind because I don't know, I don't know if I know anyone on this, on this call, but you could show me your chart. I could have a look at it and I could just ask you some questions and you're like, like, how do you know that? I'm like, I'm just reading this. I'm just reading some basic, basic things on this. It's, it's always like that. What got you into human design? I love this question, Emma. The curiosity, well, one, it was a curiosity, curiosity. It was a gut instinct for me. It was a, it was a pulling of like, there's something to this. It kept showing up. So I honored that that was step one. So the reason you're on this call is for a reason, honor it, follow that. Um, two, I really saw, like, I really want to get to know myself. So my profile is a one, three. If you're a one, three, let me know. When I learned my profile, it was like, I get it now. I now know why I teach and do what I do. So a one and a three, I I teach through personal experience and I love to learn information, absorb it all, and then break it down into simple things so other people can understand it. And I, But then when I teach it, I always teach from personal experience. I can't teach something if I haven't learned it myself. So me as a coach and as a mentor in business, I know how to run my business the way that I've done it. I know what's worked for me, but I always question myself with with teaching someone else because they don't, not everyone does something the same way. So what I realized when human design came into me, I could learn this and then I could understand that through personal experience. And then I just had to teach that, what I just had to use that as a filter for communicating to that person. And so for me, it was an amazing tool for not only understanding myself, but help other people understand themselves, which is the whole reason why I do what I do. And it just helped me become a better person, a better mother, a better coach. Um, And obviously it was for me personally, myself first, but then I couldn't not share that with others. And that's why I really love what I do. Um, And it's really helped me with so many things. So we have here, thank you, thank you. Have to jump off. That's totally fine. Is it best to have the whole family prior to I am? Yeah, I'll definitely print off all their charts. Yeah, print off everyone's charts. And in in my course, there's a video on how to do all of that kind of stuff. Um, This has been amazing information overload. Definitely going to have to watch the replay and absorb more. So Jackie probably doesn't have a defined Ajna. You probably have a white Ajna and you probably don't have a one in your profile. (laughs) So people who love information like me, they have a defined Ajna and or a one in their profile because these people are designed for absorbing information, holding information, regurgitating information. And 
that's why I know that most people don't have those things. So learning from someone like me who have, who's able to just give you the information that you need so you don't hopefully have too much of that overwhelm, um, you can go down and break that and, you, and utilize it a little bit easier. Um, thank you so much, Haley. You offer so much each time you speak. You're very welcome, Kristen or Kirsten. Um, what else do we have? What got you into that? How long did you take to understand it all? Still am. Still am. It's a constant evolving. You know, like I, I studied it at the start of last year. So it's probably been over 12 months since I've fully, like I've become a qualified teacher in human design. Mind you, I've now seen close to 400 charts, probably more, probably more. I've had at least 240. 40 people go through I am in the, in two rounds and I would expect hopefully a lot more to come through in this next round um so the more charts you see the more people you see the more you learn and so I think I've had the opportunity to see a lot of charts in a very short amount of time which has given me a lot more experience than other people um with maybe the same amount of time but I first got introduced to human design in 2018 so it's been a number of years but I'm definitely not like people have been studying this for much, much longer than me. And it's probably also why I'm not diving into teacher training. I don't want to be the oracle that's going to teach you every single in and out of human design. There are so many more people out there that if you really want to go and teach a coaching course in human design and utilize it in your business, there's so many people that went from I am into that. But the good thing about doing I am first is that when you go into those really expense, like they're, they're expense, they're, there'll be a couple of thousand dollars, right? To go and actually fully take a training course is that one, you already understand the basics. So when you, you learn it again, you're integrating it from a different space. And two, you know what you're investing in. You, you've had a trial, you know what you're investing in. And so you can actually get more out of it. Um. Emma is really excited. I did I am back in round one. Oh, we have an OG on here. And just wanted to say that it was amazing. I highly recommend it. Thank you, Darian. Are gates only the parts that are shaded in your chart? Are the gates specifically where the channels start? So a gate, a channel is two gates that connect. That's all it is. It's a gate, a channel is just two gates that connect. So they're both gates, they just connect. Um, and the gates are the gene keys so you know how i said there was five different modalities that all incorporate into human design so the the gene keys um is a is phenomenal crazy phenomenal this is the 64 gene keys and the 64 gates so if you really wanted to dive into things when people really start to run away with this you go, oh, look, my, my conscious son is in gate 24. You can go look up the Gene Keys 24 and there's nine pages on it. All right. <laughs> See what I mean? There's, there's a lot to this. Um, but I don't teach that to you guys. We cover the basics. So you can just go use it and live your life a little bit better than what you're doing right now, you know. Um, but lots of people do obviously dive into it a lot deeper. Doesn't matter if you don't know what time you were born. No, I had lots of people who didn't know what time they were born, but we tend to figure out what time you were born or around the rough time that we were born. So there's different ways to do that. Um, some people have asked family members to know even if they're morning or night or lunchtime or something like that. Um, we can also, you can also, when you put a time in, so 2 a.m., 8 a.m., 12 noon, 4 p.m., 10 p.m., you can see how much your chart changes. And then what we do is we actually look at the biggest significant changes and then we go, look, me knowing what it means to be this or that, it's like what resonates with you most? Does that make sense? And that's how we kind of get around it. The only thing is, if you, like, yes, if you know your exact time of birth, you can go so deep into human design, so, 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 so deep into human design. If you don't, we just have to stay more top level because I don't want you to get overwhelmed or think something wrong, you know? So a lot of it is still about trusting yourself. And, and we also go into that. Um, thank you. I have one and I have signed up. Can't wait. Um, oh, wow. My daughter loves information. <laughs> Melissa's saying, yeah. 
um, how do you become a teacher? You, you just you just regurgitate what you learn. <laughs> no, there there are teacher trainings. There's human design teacher trainings, um, and so they literally they just cover all the elements. It's like a course, and it goes for multiple weeks, and um, it's one run by a person who's good at teaching human design but there's also different types of teachers and this is the thing when the student's ready the teacher will appear and so lots of times people come to me with recommendations on like who I would love to go and learn human design more and then I would say hey look at x y and z like knowing who you are and the way that you like to learn and your type I would recommend person a and person b and then you just go and you watch them on Instagram or wherever they, they, they show up and you just resonate with who resonates best with you because there's so many people out there at lots of different price points. And so it's just about finding the right person for you. But we can definitely guide you in that way as well. Yeah. I really want to do I am, but I'm away for half of it. Well, Kimberly, it's all there for you darling and the and the group is all there for you and the fact that I haven't run it since February another one's not going to be coming for a while so even if you get half or you can jump into the group at some stages and you know that you've actually got the month the group for two months um feel into it feel into it and still see if it's still right for you okay um because we'll, we'll still be there and, and sometimes people can just jump on their phone and, and watch the recording or stuff at nighttime instead of a Netflix show or something like that. Um, I agree. And I did round one, two, and it was such an eye opener. I agree with Darian. Mind blowing. Oh, you guys are the best. Thanks so much. All right. Well, unless there's any other questions, I can love you and leave you. We've, we've kind of done a just under 90 minute session, which is you've done well. Oh. You're welcome, Pip and Wendy. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks so much. I'm going to send everyone out the recording. So we'll stop this and, and everyone will get an email. You're welcome, Maria. Thanks, Jackie and Kimberly. Thanks, Kim. Glad you loved it. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Brooke. I honestly, I just appreciate your time. I know it's so precious, you know. Um, Melissa's looking forward to the course. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and of, as I said, feel free to share this once you've got the recording. If you need to send it out to someone who needs it, feel free. You're welcome, Jackie. Feel free to jump off. Hey, Daniel, I see you on there. Hey, Jackie. Bye.